In the real world, for the first time in 35 years, the 2020 Formula One schedule reads the Dutch Grand Prix. Today, in the germ-free environment that is iRacing's virtual universe, we travel safely to Circuit Zandvoort. Sanctioned by the Absolute Beginner League, this is the Global Sim Racing Channel's final round coverage of the Season 19 Formula Neagle Championship. Now, even though Errol Num has been fitted for his seventh F1 crown, the F2 points race is still up for grabs between Christopher Garros and Bocek Podocek. Throw in bragging rights and the quest for momentum leading into next season, and the drivers will have plenty of reasons to race hard, and fans will have plenty of reasons to watch. So, with a bottle of Heineken and a plate of Stamput, and in welcome to yet another Formula Neagle broadcast. Way up in the press box to bring you our word's eye view. It's Johan Vandeveld, joined by yours truly, Bill Soupson. Streaming cyberspace into your place, our director, Sean Amber. Since Formula Neagle hasn't come here since season 15, let's get acquainted, or in this case, reacquainted, with Zanbord. Welcome to Zandvoort. This track just to the west of Amsterdam fell into obscurity, but is getting new life in recent times thanks to a resurgence of Formula One fans in the country. Back in the mid 20th century, it hosted the Formula One Dutch Grand Prix for nearly 30 years. Granted, it was on a much faster and more flowing layout. Nowadays, the five different versions which are available to be run are mostly tight and technical. The shortest one is a little under a mile, while even the longest only stretches to a little over two and a half miles. These tiny lengths, plus the narrowness of the track and its lack of long straights, make passing almost maddeningly difficult. The two most common spots are Tarzan, which is the first corner, and Hans Ernst, which is the final chicane. Even though it has recently been updated in the real world with more banking, even on the old track here on iRacing, it has an unusual amount of camber for a road course. The two aforementioned turns, along with Hugenholz and Schievlock, allow drivers to carry more speed than you'd expect. It also gives drivers a chance to take slightly unusual lines. Like most old school tracks, runoff is minimal. Mistakes in a few of the faster turns tend to allow no time for recovery and a big repair bill. Another unique quality is the fact that Zandvoort is literally next to the beach on the North Sea. Therefore, the sand easily blows its way onto the track surface and lessens grip. It's a tricky place to race and even trickier circuit to win at. But with the beautiful surroundings, great history, and a mob of enthusiastic fans donning orange, you can't help but want to go visit this fantastic venue. Where the seabirds cry and the rents are high on the dunes at Zanvoort. And now... For some less lyrical track info, let me reintroduce my booth mate, the fan build himself, Netherlands' own Johan Vandeveld. Johan? Thank you so much, Soup. And you're right, I'm on home turf today as we visit the sandy shores of Sandford. Now, before we talk about racing here itself, I want to remind Formula One viewers who turn into the Dutch GP in two months' time that they will see a slightly different version of the track as the real life circuit has gotten a facelift. But here, in the virtual world, we are not bothering yet with oval style final corners and new fancy pit buildings. We focus on the 4.3 kilometer track that was lastly changed in 1999. With the skip barber, well, racing usually means pack driving, where groups of drivers stay together for big parts of the race. But at Sandford Soup, I wouldn't be surprised to see this a bit less, as the circuit doesn't feature long straights, but instead offers winding paths through the dunes and corners, where mostly only one line is viable. Now, obviously, all corners will be important for drivers to get a good lap time here, but if I have to single one out, it's the Hans Ernst Bocht. It's a chicane at the end of the back straight. Getting your braking point and especially your exit right here means that you get the speed required on the start finish straight for an overtake, or in some cases to defend to someone attacking. Now, speaking of passing, so if we take a look at the point standings, it doesn't seem like anyone will be passing Aero anymore this season. No, even the draft is not going to help Nico win in Rome. And there as he sits 39 points back of Errol Numb. We talked about it in the opening. This is going to be his seventh championship. Nico having a good run, though. He sits in third place. 
Now, we're going to leave out Wojciech Podorczyk because he is a F2 driver, but we'll talk about Edwin Villano, Alex Johnson, and Henrik Camaro. They sit just a handful of points apart. And just to talk a little bit about this, uh, Vignano, Vin, uh, Vinarino has a win this season. Camaro has done very well, and Alex Johnson also has a win. So it's going to be interesting to see one of those guys can match Arrow, who has two. But there are other championships. We talked about the F2. Uh, Johan, what's going on there? Well, in the F2 championship, you'll see five drivers on screen, and mathematically, all five drivers are still in the run for the championship title. Christopher Garrels with 58 and Wojtek Potocek with 54 obviously have the best papers, but any one of these drivers can still win going into the last round of the championship. Now, if we move to the team standings as well, it's not as exciting there because Ironomi has dominated not only in the Formula One championship, but also as Team Bushfink Racing Pink, where he's the only driver He's tallied 93 points so far. That's a lot more than 60 points of NHR Esports 2.0, driven by Just Brain and Henrik Kamara. They are up three points, though, overtaking their sister team, NHR Esports. Evolve Motorsport with just uh, Wojtek Potocek and Street Trends, who's now in P5 and trying to get a podium in the final race. Good to see. We are always picking up new viewers here on the Absolute Beginner League and on the Global Sim Racing Channel. For those new to Formula Neagle, Let's go ahead and talk about, uh, uh, Johan, the race details. No, well, this is ABL's 19th season, and it's also the season finale, as we mentioned a few times already. 40-minute race here at Sandford today with open setups and a 51% fuel limit. That means that drivers will come in for a pit stop to top it off. The incident cap, however, today will be 17, so don't go over that or you'll be disqualified. Okay, so you're a veteran of the series. In the past, when you had a lap time of, of just a tick under two minutes, lap traffic, probably not a big factor. But this time, Johan, with the new rule where they're having a fast repair, it's possible somebody could get into trouble early and it may cause uh, the track to clutter up a bit. Yeah, absolutely. We see quite a big field today. I think there was something close of 30 drivers. So if drivers will have a problem on lap one, they will take the toe, they will get a free repair and they will get going again. That means that they won't be that far in front of the quick drivers like Ironome, like Lee, like Tuan Tran. And those drivers will not only have to battle each other on track, they also have to fight with the traffic. Getting by the traffic quickly is important because you do not want to lose the draft here. They're still out there in practice. Well, qualifying is just started, but nobody else, nobody's put in a qualifying time yet. Talk about the health of a series. How about a nice large field here in the season finale? Often the car counts dwindle when we get to the end of the season. Not the case today. And uh, Johan, that bodes well with some news you have about what's coming up in the future for uh, the Absolute Beginner League. Yeah, absolutely. Today we will focus, of course, on season 19 and the final race of that season. But season 20 is almost around the corner. And next week, the drivers will uh, get used to one of the two championships, the one that's not broadcast at the Tony Hayes Cup. Uh, that championship will feature the Audi TCR car and the new Porsche GT4. And they will have a test race at Laguna Seca. But three weeks from now, on March 29, the Formula Nigo will return to GSSC as well with the first race of the season at Phillip Island. Woo that'll be fun. Phillip Island always putting on a good show. So enjoy the season finale today, and then we'll see you in three weeks when we go down under to open up season number 20. And one of the things I love about it, Johan, we've talked about it whenever you and I have been in the booth before, I love the short seasons. You start, you get to the middle, you're in, and we start it all over again. Absolutely, and the, the most important thing that I was like with these short seasons is that it puts a lot more pressure on you as a driver because you know that there's no drop weeks or something that you can fall back on. If you have yep. one poor result, it kind of destroys your whole season. So you always have to be driving to the best of your capabilities. You have nothing to hide behind. You always have to be up front. And well, Euro Gnome obviously has done that, but I think that that's one of the things that the drivers will take with them in uh, in these ABL seasons that are very short. Like you said, only five races per season. Right, and let's talk about that as we look at Aero Gnome, who sits at the top of the standings. It really does make what he has accomplished all the more remarkable because basically in these short series, like you talk about one mistake and man, your championship is close to done. Somehow he has managed to be fast, 
and get to the end. Yeah, and that's really his biggest quality, I would say. I don't think that... Obviously, Aeronome is incredibly quick, but I think that his biggest quality is just making sure you don't end up in trouble during the race. For some reason, he just seems to have that magic nose that always knows that you have to turn light if uh, that you have to turn left if trouble goes right. And he always <laughs> manages to finish the race. And, uh, you can see that in the championship standings that that really brings home a lot of points for him. Uh, at the moment, however, he's not sitting in P1 anymore. Uh, anymore. Tuan Tran has just gone with the 155.0, but as I'm saying, that oh, well. Aeronome immediately uh, shuts me up because he puts in a 154.4, only three tenths slower than his quickest lap time. Lee Anderson is coming across the start finish line. He was also quick in practice, but he's not quicker in the second lap time. And those three drivers, Aeronome, Tuan Tran, and Lee Anderson Soup, they were the quickest drivers in practice, and I think that we have to keep mostly an eye on them today uh, if we want to see who will win the race. Tuan Tran, a veteran, and we just had the camera on another veteran, Edgar Sancinelli. Now we're looking at Hendrik Kamara, who sits inside the top five. He's been around for several seasons. He's sitting fifth right now, but I don't think this qualifying time is going to be good on this lap. Sitting fifth in qualifying, though, that's close enough. And really, what's our draft situation right here? If you're probably close, you should be able to this is a little technical track. Drafting here is a little tougher. Yeah, absolutely. I was talking with Iro before the race, and Iro mentioned that if you're half a second slower, that's probably the maximum that you can have as a deficit to stay with the drivers in front. So if you look at the, the, the times in practice, then you will probably see a, gap, uh, a group of three or four drivers fighting for the lead. But the rest of the cars will, will, will crumble away quite quickly and drivers like Henry Kamara were probably in that second group of drivers. David Burns, and that was one of the drivers that we just saw on screen. I don't really know uh, where he will end up. Tuan Tren, however, he is immediately getting that time back from Ironome. He goes quick as Ironome doesn't improve. Ironome, yeah, he just... Uh, let's see where he is. He's actually in the middle. He's going into the Masters book. Yep. No, the final corner is this. Yeah, he's out of Lion Deck. Here he comes. Yeah, let's actually see what he does. He needs to find four thousandths of a second. Can the Estonian do that? Going over the start finish line. He actually can, obviously. Yeah. Ironome goes back on top. This is a, a tussle between Tuan Tran and Ironome. Tuan Tran actually is going very slowly at the moment. I think that he has run out of fuel or maybe had a problem a little while ago. Uh, probably is out of fuel, so I don't think that Tuan will be able to do another lap time. Lee Anderson, however, maybe we could put the camera on him because he actually goes yeah. quickest at the moment. A 54 per zero. And actually what's really interesting is that Lee has a completely different strategy in qualifying. While Ironome and Tuan Tran are driving alone, trusting their own skills as it were, Lee Anderson, I don't know if it's his choice or it's just by luck, but he's continuously driving with other cars around him and that draft might be the difference between pole position and starting from the second row. You know, we talked about Num and Tuan Tran. It's good to see a couple old-timers. They have been going at it for, for many a season. Both of them took a little hiatus. They're both back, both former champions. We have lots of former champions here today. Director, I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of these guys. Can we put the camera on car number 25, Vincent Bream, one of the early champions? Yes, Johan? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he won the championship back in season five. Uh, it was a great season when I was still driving in ABL. We, uh, we battled it out together for the championship, actually, and he managed to best me in the final race of that season. So Vincent Brain, one of the, uh, the early champions. If we go one position, uh, so the two positions behind them, Neil Bamber, uh, car number 45, that's also one of the, the old champions as yep. well, uh, Super. He was able, one of the drivers, uh, we talked about it last week, one of the, the mice that was able to play when the cat was away, the cat being Errol Numb, who stepped away for a while. Alex Johnson not here today, a champion we saw last week. David Burns, his name showed up there. He got us all excited there for a minute, Johan. I see his car is in the pit lane. Come on, Dave, bring it on out. There's a champion for us. Yeah, I don't think David Burns will set a qualifying time. It seems like he had a few off-tracks or at least incidents during qualifying, and that meant that he cannot complete his lap time. But there's only a few seconds left in qualifying. Cars will go over the start-finish line for the last time. Lee Anderson can actually improve his lap time. This time around only 55.1, but I do think that Lee has the opportunity to do one more lap if he so wishes. Ironome as well. 23 drivers putting in qualifying times, 27 names on the entry list. Two drivers yet to put in qualifying time. It's not a good day for for 
CSRC commentators as Dawson Brock and Ryan Walker. Neither one were able to put in times. Not sure if Dawson is actually going to race today. Season number 19. GSRC has been here for many of them. Look at Nico Wen and Roman having a great season. Currently seventh in qualifying. Sometimes qualifying doesn't matter. I think, let me correct myself. Nico down in ninth. At at this track, I don't think you want to be too far down. It's going to be hard to have a long train around this place. Absolutely. Let's focus on Iron Gnome, however. He is coming through the uh, Hans Ernst Bocht on a few more corners before he will complete his final qualifying time. He needs to win around two tenths of a second to get the pole position. So soon. And what you say is completely right. This is one of those tracks where uh, it's not necessarily a Monaco equivalent if you compare it to Formula 1, but it's kind of like a Monaco equivalent. I would say that qualifying uh, is really important here, starting up front so you don't lose the draft when the people up front will drive away. Coming out of the Avi Lariadijk, it seems like Ironome actually just heads it into the yep. pits. He gives up, and that means that it is Lee Anderson who will get the pole position here at Sandsport. Lee Anderson is sneaky fast, boys and girls. He's been around for several seasons. Never, I'm not sure if he has a win yet, but he is always racing up front. Let's see if he can bring it home. Qualifying just wrapping up. They're just letting everybody finish their hot laps. Still looking at 23 drivers putting in times. Neil Bamber just with a great lap. He moves himself from P12 to P7 there, 155.3. I think that's the final time in, uh, in qualifying. That is a huge jump, and ag agreed, there's a big difference between 12th and 7th. Well, obviously 5, but at this track, that probably means more than it does at a, at a regular track that is so draft-oriented. Let's go ahead and run down the, uh, the grid now so that Johan and I both get our GSRC's commentator bonus for getting through them all before we go green. Lee Anderson sits on the pole. He's going to be flanked by Errol Num. Row 2 is populated by veteran Tuan Tram, former champions, and Vincent Bream. Both champions sit in in row 2. Kevin Walsh and Henrik Kamara populate row 3. Another champion, Neil Bamber, sits in the 7th position. He's going to be inside of the Strudelmeister Thomas Kick. Wojciech Podocek still fighting for that F2 crown. Sits inside Nico Roman. Just Brain is also a famous ABL face. He comes uh, home in P11, starts to race in P11. He's flanked by Alex Wojtyk, Christopher Garros, fighting for the Formula 2 crown in Jimenez. So only in P13, he's followed by Scott Angelo. Matt Tempest in P15, followed by Frederick Neptune. Aaron Law starts to race in P17. He's followed by Luis Rodriguez Lujan and Christopher Crook and Edgar Sancinelli round out the top 20. Hitting blackjack, it is Neil Stevenson in the double duck spot. It is Neil Small Step Armstrong. 23rd is Peter Reed with Ryan Walker, David Third Degree Burns, Dawson Never Say Die, Brock, and Troy Banks four drivers that did not put in qualifying times. We hope they grid up with you, and we're glad that you're here with us. Season finale of season 19. I think we have time, Director. Can we quickly look at the look at the weather here before we go green? I think we'll have a little bit of time to get that up. Johan, what do you think? Yeah, it seems a little bit warmer than in practice at the moment. 95 degrees track temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. I think that the drivers will be happy with this weather. It could have been a lot warmer. You can hear the engine start to harmonize. Car number 337 sits in control of the field. You know what to do. Gather up the chickens, take cover on the cows. The horses are out of the barn. And indeed, Lee Anderson's going to lead them down into Tarzan. Num is in second. Making a yell at second position is Tuan Trent. As he ducks inside of Num, they go side by side. The back half of the top five, it's Bream and Kamara. Kevin Walsh with a horrible start from P5. He at least dropped down two positions, but it seems like everyone is coming through the Tarzan Bocht as they now go to the very, very uh, tight Huguenots Bocht. It seems like still everyone is just keeping it clean, free wide in the back, but everyone keeps the nose from each other. But all the way up front, it's still Lee Anderson, followed by Iron Nome, and Tuan Trent is very, very close for P2. You're right, Kevin Walsh continues to fall. The back half of the top 10, Bamber, kick, Walsh, Protocek and Nico Wenin Roman. There's your top 10. Up front, the top three start to drive away. Anderson, Numb, and Tran. About a second gap back to Kamara. Kamara's got a hustle. Ooh, and then oh, no. Kamara actually losing it. Vincent Bram can just afford it. What a save. 
Henry Kamara's race is over. He is in the wall. He, he of course, will Whoa. be able to get a fast repair. Bream had to get on the binders, got way off momentum. He made a little bit of contact with Alex, uh, with uh, Kevin Walsh. Poor Kevin's having a rough start. Great job of Bream getting away from the incident. Unfortunately, it put him right back into the chaos, and he got a little bit of damage. He has fallen back into 11th. And that mistake, Johan, that's what we talk about. It just lets the train get away, and now it's a three-car race. Absolutely. Now, depending on how heavy the top three will fight, maybe the Neil Bender will be able to close down the gap and go, uh, yeah, oh, put himself in a fight for the win. But I don't really see that happening. The gap is big, and I think the Neil Bender will be reeled in by Wojtek Wojtek, who's now in the top five. What a great run from, from the pole there, who will actually probably grab the Formula 2 title if you can just keep it there. Uh, if we go to P7, however, Christopher Geros, director, he's having a move on the outside of Alex Fritschik, side by side over the start finish straight. And Christopher needs to make moves and he needs to make them quickly if he wants to fight for the Formula 2 title. Alex on the inside breaks a little bit earlier and Christopher on the outside just able to take more momentum. And if he just can keep it there, he can keep it there. Next turn will be in his favor. He moves up a spot. Good job. So he is a couple cars behind the man he is uh, chasing in the points, or actually who is chasing him, Jocek Podacek. So we'll keep an eye on that battle. If memory serves, Johan, and you can correct me if I'm wrong of this, I believe that the F2 championships are scored differently than the F1. They are scored against each other if memory serves. So, uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely correct. That, that works like that. We also missed a, a big crash. In the back of the field just now, as Kevin Walsh is still having a horrible race. He gets it completely wrong on the exit of the Hugholz. Both several drivers are out of contention, including a new Stevenson who has to take a fast repair. They're all coming out of the pits now because Frederick Neptune also coming out of the pits. Troy Banks, Aaron Laas, so a lot of drivers already took out in the fast repair. <laughs> now we've only one car left to make it to the end. It's sad to see the Trident, Frederick Neptune, having trouble there as he is back in 20th position. Taking fast repairs, though, they come on out. We're looking at your leaders, Num, Tran, and Anderson. Yeah, and the interesting thing is Anderson is not on the lead anymore. He made a mistake a few corners ago in uh, uh, turn number nine. He lost quite a, bit of, quite a bit of seconds there. He's still in the draft, though, but... It seems like Tuan Tran is really the one with uh, with the moves at the moment, Soup. He is right on the gearbox of here or not. Director, we want to go back and take a look at the incident that we had marked there earlier that involved Vincent Bream getting on the binders. I believe we have that available. If we look at those cars side by side, wait, there we go. We're going to bring that up as they settle down that battle. Here's what we saw earlier. Watch Vincent Bream really get locked this up, and then we can stay on Bream a little bit longer here. As the car gets loose in front of him, coming up right here at this corner, I believe they were trying to get up. Bream gets on the binders. Now stay with Vincent. He avoids that one. But unfortunately, as they start to go around him, that's Walsh that gets him right there. Yeah, tough luck, tough luck for Vincent there, who amazingly avoided that first incident. Great job from him. Uh, he's still driving around, however, just down in P17. Back on the lead, Aeronome is now trailing to one trend that overtaking maneuver. Dip and out in the favor of the Dutch driver. Lee Anderson is still behind in P3. Like we said, Neil Bembe P4. He's not able to close down the gap to these drivers. Around two seconds between the top three and P4. Here's my take on this. As long as Bamber doesn't get into the mix, these guys are happy to swap positions. Nobody really wants to be doing too much on the front because you're burning more fuel, right? Absolutely, always Neil Bember actually loses it. The exit of turn then, oh, that's a hard hit. He loses his front wheel. That will be a tow and a fast repair for Neil Bember. Horrible luck for the grid there. He was trying to give it his all, not only to stay in front uh, of Wojtek Potacek, but maybe also to close on the gap to the top three. Just too early on the gas here. Understeers off the track and just, once you reach that center soup, there's no saving it anymore. Hard hit for Bember. That's what you call director's curses. He decided to, the, that was Sean Ambrose who put the camera on you. Uh, Neil, don't blame us. A hard day for the for Bambi. Not, 
Nice battle behind the, uh, behind the leaders for P4 at the moment. Thomas Kick has closed down the gap to Wojtek Potacek. And Wojtek actually, I don't know. I know Wojtek a little bit, Soup, and I don't know if he's thinking at the moment for this race or if he's thinking about the title because he's so close to the Formula 2 title. But at the same time, you want to stay in front of Thomas Kick and maybe work together so you don't get reeled in by Christopher Geralt and Alex Wojtek who are still battling behind for P6. Indeed, the interval from Geralt's up to kick, about two and a half seconds. Let's stay on this battle here a little bit with Podocek, a veteran ahead of kick. Both these guys have a lot of Formula Eagle races under their belt as they head down into corner number six, the sweeping right-hander. And then they hit the three corners that I refuse to give the names to because it's against my religion to give corner names to sponsors. I'll do it. This is Marlboro, I guess. And then down here into eight, which is Renault. And then this big sweeping left holder, Vodafone. Yeah, and both these drivers are getting through those corners well. Interesting to see, especially through Vodafone, uh, the different racing lines between them. Wojtek with a way earlier apex than Thomas. So on the exit, that actually helps Wojtek to just stay in front and keep a little bit of extra speed. These two drivers are separated by virtually nothing. Now, let's move, move the camera a little bit up forward because Lee Anderson, he is trying to make something happen. Last lap, I was following him a little bit, soup, and he's putting his nose on this uh, inside of Irono more often than not. You can see that he wants that leading position back that he started the race with, and coming out of the final corner, he is on the gearbox of the Estonian. Will he actually go to the inside? He will, and he's getting a little bit of draft from Tuan Trent. Irono is getting boxed in and will go for the double overtake. Tuan Tran with the wheels on the grass. Don't do that, Tuan, because you ruin your race. He keeps it off before he starts breaking. Lee Anderson gets the lead. There you go. That's a twofer. You know, you talked about Anderson. I was watching him. He was really working the curbing a lot more than, than uh, Tran and Num were. He was really working hard, and he got what he wanted. He's up in front. Yeah, this is exactly what we want. Now, one thing that I want to uh, put the camera on, let's go to Christopher Garros in P6, because he, of course, is fighting for this Formula 2 championship. He's trying to close down the gap to Wojtek Potacek. But what's that in front of him? It's another car. It's one of those lapped cars that we were talking about, Soup. It's Frederick Neptune, who has a new car after an incident. And Christopher might use Frederick Neptune to just leapfrog, give himself a little bit of extra pace in the draft to close down the gap to Thomas Kick and Wojtek Potacek a little bit quicker than he otherwise would be able to. Kind of use them as a stepping stone. He can get a little faster, get up to Neptune, get around Neptune, and maybe get close enough to the back of the Strudelmeister, Thomas Kick. Potacek in fourth, Kick in fifth. Now, Kick is an F2 driver as well, so that'll stand, that's a, that's a point between... Uh, Podocek and uh, what would be Garros for that championship. Let's drop back and look at Seville. We haven't talked about this guy. He's fun to watch. This is Matt Tempest. He's racing right behind Garros. He's worked his way up. He started in 15th, up 7th position. Is that really a kind of a bad qualifying for, for Matt? Matt's, Matt's a good driver. Things are settling down. We are 30 minutes into this 40-minute uh, race. I look correct myself. 30 minutes to go. 10 minutes into this race. Got to figure out which way the, cl the clock is ticking. Here's the veteran. Put a check and kick. Yeah, still side by side. Thomas kick now in front of them. Wojtek Potacek relegated one position. Now, the lap time of Wojtek Potacek compared to Garros, Garros is one tenth, almost two tenths quicker. So he is closing the gap surely, but suddenly. I think at the moment the Paul is not worried too much. He has a draft buddy, while Christopher Garros is all alone. He has passed through Frederick Neptune just now. And if Wojtek can stay in front until the pit stop start, he is in a very good position to grab the title. We look at that battle. We don't need to go there, but I just want to comment of the three guys up front. The guy who seems in no no real desire to lead is Errol Num. He seems to be happy sitting back in third. We saw Anderson work really hard to get to the front. Num is fine sitting in third. 
Look yeah, at the gap he gives too. And that's that's one of the things. Like maybe this is different strategies that both these drivers are approaching the race with. Lee wants to race up front because he knows that if something happens behind him, the draft can be broken very very quickly, like we saw in, in lap one. But Iro, maybe he's not so worried. Maybe he trusts his own race pace a little bit more. And if he just stays behind right now, he can save that little bit more fuel that will really pay him dividends once the pit stops come. Yeah, I would agree. This is one of the rare times that Arrow wasn't the fastest in qualifying, though. He's actually about two-tenths of a second slower than Anderson. So Anderson's got the pace. We talked about it, though. What Numb is able to do is get the car to the finish. And and I think right back in third position, I think he not only does he trust his speed, as we see making a little peek down there as Quan Tran, he also trusts his ability to, to uh, see what's any problems are going to happen in front of him and figure out a way to get through it. If we put the camera a few positions behind to uh, car number 16, Matt Tempest, he's having a great race so far. Started all the way down to P15, up to P7 at the moment. He's 10 seconds behind the leader, but as you can see, he's right on the tail of Christopher Garros. He's been really the Scandinavian for the last few laps. It's a great race so far for Matt Tempest, who obviously was helped by disaster from some of the drivers early on that helped him win a few positions. But the pace is there, and he seems to I'll be helping Wojtek a little bit by making Christopher's life a little bit more difficult. Do you see Tempest as we ride on board? The car in front of him is Geralt. Behind him is Wojtek. And then, and then there's Neptune, the lap car that all these drivers were able to get around comfortably. Again, no cars. That's a great angle. You could actually see Geralt and then you can see Podocek ahead of them. That's who Geralt is after. So close, but also so far. Now, if you Put the camera a few positions more back to car number uh, 125, P10. David Burns, that's also one of the drivers who's having a great race. Hey! We talked about him after qualifying. No qualifying time set. He started all the way down in P25, already up to P10. Great race from David so far. He obviously always has a lot of pace. It would be, well, I think speed-wise, right up there with lead to one hero. He opted to stay from the back or maybe had some qualifying troubles, but he has the speed. I think if he can keep this up, a top five is not uh, without, outside of the realm of possibilities for the Scott. Another former champion. Good to see David in here. He kind of snuck in on us. I wasn't sure he was going to race. Up all those positions. Not going to call him a hard charger because, again, I don't believe in if you don't put in a qualifying time. Great battle happening for P12 at the moment. Edgar Sancinelli following Christopher Kruger, Neil J. Armstrong. Neil Armstrong on the outside at the moment of the uh, Ion Leijendijk bocht. You can see Edgar Sancinelli actually with the overdriver going free wide here, Soup. Over the start, finish straight. It's Edgar Sancinelli with a great run. It's very tight between the drivers on the outside. Christopher almost hitting Neil there, and both of them going wide. Will this give Edgar Sancinelli the move that he needs, the speed that he needs? No, he almost touches the grass. That kills all the traction. So, all in all, a lot of excitement. No position changes, however. The big three are battling it out hard for P12. How about a tip of the hat, though, to Sancinelli, who knew that shallow entry was going to cause him to come across the track, so he got out of it. Edgar, nice job as they continue the battle. Great battle with Armstrong in 12th. Up 10 spots for Neil. Yeah, they stay close together through the sky flag here. Edgar Sancinelli still following. Edgar Sancinelli also, all these drivers are up uh, quite a few spots. Edgar, six positions. Christopher, also six positions. And Neil, absolutely a lot with 10 positions. Great racing from these drivers so far. Now, if you go back up to the front, because these drivers are now coming out of the Hans Ernst and are going for another time over the start finish straight soon. It's still to one trend uh, in P3 or still Lee Anderson up front. Ironome actually has taken over P2 for to one trend, it seems. Indeed. Now, usually Tran is comfortable with this pace that I always worry about him making that early stop and leaving the guys behind. It'll be interesting to see if all three of these guys decide to come in together or if someone either wants to run long by themselves or uh, break off early. Here, look at Tran. He's watching there as Num's going to make a move on Anderson. Oh, my. Arrow duck it in deep. Yeah, it's one as well. I think Tuan hit the grass once again on entry there. He lost a little bit of control, so he had to send it to the inside of Iron Man. Uh, the, the strategy of these drivers will be very interesting to see. The drivers can obviously go, like you said, oh, there's, there's a little bit of contact there, and Tuan loses his nose. He will lose the tip of his nose there. 
Now, this is one of the things that uh, the drivers were talking about. If you lose the tip of your nose like that, that will actually hurt your straight line speed by a couple of tons per lap. Little free rhinoplasty. Thanks to the gearbox of Arrow of Num. Tuan Tran now without that. Let's see if he's able to stick behind Num. Of course, they're probably in the pit window now. Tran can come in and get that taken care of. Absolutely, but I think that the strategy for Tuan will be to just follow Eero or Lee once they come in for the pit stop. I think Lee and Eero both believe that they have the pace to separate themselves from the other two, but Tuan, I don't think that he has the, strong, uh, the stronger race pace of the three. And he will have to come in with one of the other two, just really work together and leapfrog the other driver. But let's see if they actually come in now, because Tuan, you know, like you said, he has a free repair waiting for him. He can just come into the pits and get that one done, get his, uh, get his nose plastered back on. Let's stay on this. Two corners to go, a pair of right-handers that'll lead into pit entry. Usually you can tell when Aero Num wants to pit. He usually works his way to the front. He likes to be first down pit lane. And they come around. We're going to go around one more time. Nope. Ooh, Tuan's trying to sell the dummy there. He's trying to sell the dummy. Very, uh, very smart from the Dutch one. I think the only people he fooled were the commentators, but that was a nice <laughs> job, Tuan. Uh, great job from Tuan. Now let's go back to P6 for a moment. As Matt Tempest actually got by Christopher Geros. Christopher Geros trying to return the favor in the Tarzan Bocht. On the inside, he is putting it side by side. He's getting by Matt Tempest. Nico Roman, the PA behind him, also trying to get involved in this fight. This is great news for Wojtek Potacek because these drivers are all losing time to the second group. We ride on board with Nico Roman looking ahead at the two cars in front of him. It's about, well, you can see the tower there to your left, about 3.7 seconds from Garros to Potacek. Yeah, four car battle actually. Don't be fooled by thinking that Nico is the last car on the train because Alex Foytik is just behind them as well. So a lot of cars close by in this fight for P6 it is. Nico Roman is really trying to, to get that P7 away from, from Matt Tempest. Taking a look on the inside of, uh, of the Mas Maborobo. Yeah, this battle considerably more intense than the two car battle in front. We don't need to go there. Kick and Podocek are just happy to run in order around the track. These guys are really working hard. Right now, Garros is leading this four-car train. Won't be long if David Burns can keep up the pace. You talked about a top five. He's only just a tick under four seconds behind this guy. These guys, if he can get up there. Yeah, if you compare the lap time of David Burns with the leaders of this group, David is almost a second per lap quicker. He's making giant leaps uh, at the moment towards Crystal. Leaders go around one more time as we just reach the halfway mark here in a few seconds. Who's decided to, who are they going to decide to let lead right now? Well, it's Anderson, Num. I don't think we're going to see Tuan, uh, Tuan Tran up front for a while now with that nose that he's got. No. In fact, he's going to be careful not to lose the draft. Yeah, absolutely. It almost seems like he's on the edge of losing it at the moment. The gap between him uh, and the drivers in front as well. Right on the edge at the moment, he's three four tens down to Euro Gnome. And well, Gnome set before the race, and that's right about the cutoff point of being on your own or staying in the draft. So, if he gets one trend, he really has to focus, and these laps will be mightily important for him if he wants to be in a contention for the victory today. Johan, correct me if I'm wrong, but for me, if I had the choice of losing my nose or my wings on a skippy, I'd almost prefer to lose the wings. You, you lose a lot of straight line speed without the nose being there. I guess the wings help a little bit, I guess. Absolutely. You get an incredible amount of drag if you, if you, especially that little tip of the nose. It's so easy to lose the tip of the nose when you just don't realize how close you are behind another, uh, behind another driver. And when you just barely touch them, immediately the tip of the nose flies off. So it, it goes way quicker than you think. And the amount of drag that you get uh, because of it, 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 it's huge. At the moment, you can see Tuan Tran still being right behind the other two. He's not losing draft as of yet. So luckily for him, he can stay with his rivals. And 
Oh, we're over halfway uh, the race already. Let's see if one of them actually uses this point to come in for their first pit stop. Uh, the drivers will be able to do around 25, 30 minutes uh, with one of the tanks, maybe even a little bit longer if you manage to fuel safe. It doesn't seem like any of them has any intention to go to the pits at this point. Juan's going to take a peek to the inside of Arrow. He gets one. Let's see if he forces the issue. No, he's going to tuck right in here. The Roland Sony says fine. Johan, will will that nose, will that cost him time in pit lane or, or with the fast repair, is that, that's a, it's free? It's negligible. It will cost him a little bit of time, but at the same time, Twan Tren has been in, uh, in the, following the other driver. So he has also saved a little bit of fuel that actually might help him. We actually see some pit stops at the moment. Thomas Kick is in Matt Tempest as well from the third group. And this is actually really interesting to see. Both these drivers are choosing not to stay with well, Wojtek Potacek and the group of Christopher Giros respectively. They really try to battle it out on their own. Thomas Kick is rolling out of the pits. It seems like he will be all by himself soon as he comes out. Yeah, him being all by himself, but along with that, Bocek Potocek is all by himself now, although he does have a five-second gap on Garros. They kick and Gar uh, kick and Potocek were able to stretch that gap to the guys that were chasing them. Again, though, only one position separating Potocek and Garros. So I'll take a quick look at the points. I believe that Garros was leading Potocek by by a handful of points when we went through those. Yeah. He's got a four-point advantage on on a Votex, so Garrel's still probably close enough to get that F2 crown. Yeah, all the things will be there. Is obviously also bonus points for grab based on your qualifying position, your fastest lap. So there's a lot of things that we have to keep in mind if we're trying to do the mathematics of who is in the lead at the moment. And one thing that I'm looking at is also David Burns. He is still you going so quick to the group in front of him. Now that actually might have two effects. It might help uh, Wojtek Potencek if David Burns just fights with Christopher a lot. But it also might help Christopher if David, with his extra speed, might be that stepping stone for Christopher to, to close down the gap to the group in front of him. Yeah, Geralt's get on the back of the coattails of Burns. All right, here's uh, Wojtek coming in for a stop. So keep an eye on that. Remember, he was right behind Nico Roman before he made a stop. Anderson, Tran, and Num up front. You can see it on the tower. Yeah, and especially with Tuan Tran in P2, you would almost think, Soup, that Tuan Tran is planning a pit stop. He is move, trying to make moves forward. He already has Iro Num, and if he can also pass Lee before he goes into the pits, that will help him save a little bit of time compared to his rifle. Peter Reed making a stop. Okay, I'm going to try to explain this as we look at Reed coming in. Where you are on the track, what position you are, really doesn't matter to these guys until they want to come down pit road. And because the speed is slower, if you can be a position up or two positions up, as far as the time-wise goes, it's a big advantage to be first down pit lane. At least that's my take. Absolutely. That's why just before pit stops, you see people moving forward in the group. That's really the point that you want to make some moves forward because it actually does save you time. And if you, for example, uh, have been leading the group and you have not been able to save some fuel, being the first one to go into pit road, that actually might offset that a little bit to make sure that you don't lose the draft. But the top drivers are catching one of the lap drivers. It's Neil Stevenson. Will this be the moment that Lee Anderson goes into the pits? Will this be a dummy? No, it will not be a dummy. All three are into the pits. Lee almost touches the wall there. Going into pit, exit, uh, pit entrance. He saves it though, but Swan Trent is right on his coattails there. Errol Numb made his indication he was going in first, and I, I'm not sure if the other guys decided to come in afterwards or not. So they all go in. They all hit their box nice. Watching an iRacing pit stop is not all that exciting, but right now it is kind of cool. Let's see who's going to get out first. Anderson's the front car, Numb is behind him, Tran is third in line. The two cars behind, look at the Anderson is slow off. Oh, Johan, I think he's going to be in jeopardy of losing the draft. Oh, immediately almost contact between Tuan Tran and uh, Iron Numb there in the Tarsan bot. I don't think Tuan Tran Indeed. was really 
uh, understanding how close he was to Iro Known there. But Lee Anderson, wow, that's a huge gap between him and the rest. I think that Lee Anderson really has shot himself in the foot and just leading this train almost all ways long. He has used way more fuel than the rest. And behind them, Wojtek Podacek has also made his pit stop. He is way out in front of Thomas Kick at the moment. Several seconds the pole is in front of the German. And this would be great news for Wojtek Podacek, who is still fighting with Christopher Giros for the Formula 2 title. With this position difference, I don't think that the pool uh, will be stopped getting the title. Let's go to the lead. This is side by side. Tran is fighting real hard. You know, Johan Tran went in there to pit lane, got that new nose. He almost lost it on the very first corner again. <laughs> get to the back. Look at these guys side by side. It's been this way for, for half a lap. Well, let's see if they can stay like this side by side. At the moment, Iranon takes the nose in front of Tuan Tran, but Tuan Tran on the outside has a better line, might have some more speed as well. This is great news for Lee Anderson, however. He loves to see the fighting in front of him because he will get that much quicker to the back of Tuan Tran at the moment. Still leads the Hans, uh, Hans Ernstbocht. It's still just nose to tail between these drivers. There will be a lap car in front of them. That's Frederick Neptune in a few laps. I don't think that's enough for, for Tuan Tran and Irodon to stay in front of Lee Anderson if they keep fighting with this because Lee is taking really quick steps to uh, forward. Okay, the pit window is done. So, Johan, let's take a second to see how this played out. We see that Anderson was probably the worst case out of the three up front with Tran and Num ahead of him, but I think Anderson might get there. What happened with Wojciech Podacek? Wojciech Podacek had a great pit stop. He comes out P4. He's in front of Thomas Kick everything that the poll wanted he is now ready for uh, that formula 2 title if he can keep it clean thomas kick p5 great race from him so far he's uh yeah shame for him that he lost that fight that group that he had with water putter check but still respectable position for him now david burns look at him we we're talking about it soon that he might catch the group of christopher garras he's not only caught the group he has immediately surpassed it he's now in p6 and he is closing down the gap rapidly to Thomas Kick and behind them P7 onwards Christopher Giros and Luca Roman and also Alice Poitik are still nose to tail on the battle for P7 last driver in the top 10 that will be Matt Tempest he has lost the, uh, the touch with the rest of the group he is now all by himself he has to hope for some heavy battling in front if he wants to move forward you're talking about Burns and the advantage that Garros might have but unfortunately Burns was able to make that stop and he's now two seconds up on Garros so any advantage Garros is going to get on the back of the coattails hanging on to Burns that's not going to happen as that gap is too big absolutely so it will be interesting to see if David Burns can just move it to the rear of Thomas Kick and actually scrounge up a, a P5 position after starting without a qualifying time all the way down in P25. Now, let's go back to the leaders because that battle is really, really exciting. Um, Lee Anderson still behind him, however. He's not been involved in that P1 battle yet, but you can see the purple car behind him. Ah, cute, uh, cute following music there, uh, Soup, because it is getting closer and closer. Iron no, right behind Tuan Trent as they go out of the Ari Leijendijk bocht. He will probably want to get a P1 position back. I think that Ironome knows that, well, if he stays behind Tuan Tran, even though he's in the draft, he, they will be slower than Lee Anderson. He gets really close, but he actually stays behind them, though. Now, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but if I'm these guys, I'm going to leapfrog, but I'm going to try to do it without it slowing down our times. Num and Tran, these guys know what's going on. They are well aware of, of the situation with Anderson back there, one and a half seconds. How many miles, how many laps, how many corners have Tuan Tran and Errol Num battled each other? Ah, oh, countless. Absolutely, but the only thing that you have to realize is that if these two drivers make one tiny mistake, the gap between them and Lee Anderson is only 1.8, well, 1.6 seconds. So there's virtually nothing between them. One mistake and Lee Anderson will have caught up to them. You know, Johan, I got to give a tip of the hat to Tran. He's He's been around for a while. He won his championship. Then his pace kind of slowed down a bit. He's really, really competitive today. Yeah, I think that Tuan Tran just focused on some other cars uh, for a while and, and not the skipping that much anymore. But you can see that on track, he hasn't lost that much of his speed. He's still right there on top with the other drivers. And uh, he's a force to be reckoned with for sure. Always in, in contention for the podium uh, podium positions. We'll 
will stay on this battle. The real question here, I don't expect much to happen between Tron and Num until we get down to the last couple laps. What they're going to watch, the real story is if Lee Anderson can get back in the mix. My goodness. He's moved his seat up a little closer to the steering wheel now. Just one and a half seconds behind these guys. Able to keep pace with them. Yeah, but keeping pace is unfortunately not enough for him. He has to also close down the gap. Tron Trent defending the inside now. It seems like the gloves are coming off a little bit. Uh, maybe uh, not. Maybe Tron Trent is just giving Aeronome the position that he wants, letting him leapfrog and getting by as they reach the tires on both. But this will also help Lee Anderson a little yeah. bit. Let's actually see what the gap is. Yeah, the gap between Lee Anderson and Tron Trent is only 1.2 seconds. So this actually helps Lee Anderson to just close down the gap and get back into the draft a little bit sooner. Yeah, I'll say so. When, when Trent pulled over, I expected that that he wouldn't lose a lot of speed, but my goodness, he did, and it, it knocked off four tenths of a second. Anderson now got so close to being into the toe. Yeah, a lot of uh, fights have broken up since the pit stops. The one that's still going on is the one for P7. Nico Roman just in front of Christopher Garros. Now, Garros, ah, this is a difficult situation for him, Soup. If you come into the race as the championship leader, you know that you have to beat Wojtek Potocek. You're so close in position before the pit stop, but then after the pit stop, you see David Burns passing you, and you see drivers like Luka Roman in front of you. It is really hard not to get frustrated. These drivers are still nose to deal with. Alex Wojtek, uh, not as far behind as well. Here's the good news, and I don't want to get into the weeds too much on this, but Nico Roman, I believe, is an F1 driver, so that position will not hurt uh, Geralt's as much as he might think, as as both Burns and Roman are F1 drivers. Honestly, uh, you were talking about bonus points. It's going to be too hard for us to call a champion, I believe. We'll have to see if we can get one before we go off the air for that F2 crown. Yeah, the Nico Roman is not only an F1 driver, he's second in the, in the championship behind Aaron yeah. at the moment. So the worst drivers to be stuck behind than, uh, than Nico Roman. <laughs> Alice Fuitek, however, he's uh, getting a little bit feisty. Taking a look at the inside there of the Hans Ernstbach. He doesn't put it side by side. He stays behind him. And I think that Christopher is now in the perfect situation to get a little bit of draft. But let's move a couple of positions forward, uh, director, to David Burns. Because we were talking about David Burns and him closing the gap to Thomas Kick. Well, he has been doing so. Last time around, 1.3 seconds the Scott has been quicker. It is this, well, giant leaps is probably too, too uh, euphemism. For what David Burns is doing. He is going very, very quickly. This time around only seven tenths of a second. And it says something if you say only seven tenths of a second. David Burns is moving to the top five very, very quickly. Real quickly before it gets important, let's get a little screen time to some of the guys we've ignored. How about 11th position, car number 27? This is Lewis Luhan. He is up uh, seven spots. Behind him, former champion Vincent Bream. I'm going to run through this pretty quick. Fan favorite Edgar Chancinelli in the mix. Last week, my booth mate Ryan Walker up 10 spots. And how about we'll lap up with Kevin Walsh? We saw him start at fifth. Boy, he did not have the race he hoped for. He's down 10 spots. Yeah, just we saw a lead overtake. Tuan Trent is back in the lead, but. The reason that we emphasize this is it was a great overtake from Tuan Tuan in the inside of Skyflak. That's not one of the corners that you really want to pass someone because you're completely on the limit there. He's putting on the inside of the Estonian. And this is just a very, very daring move from the Dutch driver. Putting it on the inside. Also great respect from Irano to just not close the, the door there, but just keeping both of these drivers in the race. Now, if we go back live, Tuan Tran actually makes a mistake there on the exit of the Ari Leijendijk Boch. Ironom immediately goes to the inside, but look behind him, Lee Anderson. He has brought down the gap to way under a second, and he's back into the mix, Soup. Yeah, the battling up front was not the type of battling that those guys wanted to have because it slowed down their pace. Now they are side by side through Tarzan, and Anderson is back in the mix. He's there now. The 153.3 oh. loss on the run. A little bit of a contact between Tran his trans right rear and numbs front left got together they think they're okay yeah i think you know, might have just steered in a little bit too early there i was saying that lee anderson just got an incredibly quick left time there's almost again there's contact there 
as they go through the Rob Slotenmaker board between Eero Nome and Tuan Trent. These drivers are, are gloves off at the moment, so there's nothing between these drivers and they're not holding back. It's like they're racing WTCC cars the way they're bumping into each other. The start finish line is a good distance out of the final corner. There's enough time probably to make an attempt at a pass before you get to the finish line out of that final corner. Let's go ahead and stay with them for a while here, see how it plays out this lap. And what I want to pay attention to is watch where the start finish line is in relation to uh, Lion Dyke, corner number 13. A few corners ago, trend. just real quickly, Ironom lost the tip of his front wing, I think. Uh, I don't know if we can get a few of that, but I think that I saw something fly off the Estonian's car. That actually mean that, might mean that he's in the same situation as Tuan Tran with just a lack, uh, lack of straight line speed. Or at least a deficit of straight line speed. Yeah, when I look on my, on my screen, I'm not seeing a nose on the front of the Roland Estonia there. Oh, yeah. The nose seems to be gone, however, on, on, on the broadcast screen. So Iron Gnome will have a little bit of deficit on straight line speed coming out of the final corner. I don't know what to want. He is weaving <laughs> like crazy there. There's a drunken sailor in car number 23 down the straight into Tarzan. We'll have this and one more lap to go. Anderson is there with Numb's nose missing. Man, it's going to be hard for him to get anything done. Absolutely. Now, quick update. Almost all the other battles this race have been settled down. Uh, David Burns is fighting uh, with Thomas Kick. We don't have to go to it. We can stay on this battle. They're getting close. The battle for P7 is still going on with Christopher Giros. But this battle for the lead oh, it is so incredible because now I'm wondering what will Lee Anderson think at this point? Will he just see the, the incredibly hard fight that's going on between Trent and Norman think, oh, if I just buy my time, I will get some position. So will he just put himself in the mix and make it free wide as they come over start from the straight next time around? Remember back, though, of uh, before the pit stops, we saw Tran make a move from third position, and that's when he did not have a nose on the car. So it's not like Num is not going to be able to do anything. I almost think that Anderson might be in the best spot here. As he gets yeah. right up on the back of Num. Now, positive thing that Lee has going for him is he has a car that's not broken at this moment. He still has all his bits on the sky. That will only help him with only one more lap to go. There's a little bit of traffic in front of them as well. Just Brain. I don't think Just will play a big factor, but something to keep in mind. All right. With apologies to the rest of the field as we just have two corners and then a lap to go, we're going to focus our attention up front and watch the race craft between two former champions, Juan Tran, the def Aero Num, and then, of course, a man who would like to get a win, Lee Anderson, I think his first time out of the final corner. Again, watch the racing line that Tuan Tran takes. You would almost think that Hero Numb slams it in the pit wall almost there, trying to follow Tuan Tran on the outside, however, through the Tarzan Bocht. Almost nothing between them, it is Tuan Tran who stays in front. Lee Anderson is just following at this point, but he is getting very, very close. Tuan Tran is swerving still as they go through the Huguenots Bocht. Lee Anderson is getting closer, but it's still single foul as they reach the infield section of the track soup. And now they work through the S section up into corner number six, which is the sweeping right-hander. Where does Numb make his move? There's, it's so twisty. Is there any room to make it before the final corner? Oh, they tried in the sky flag a few laps ago. Iron Numb taking a little look, but he doesn't have the courage to put it side by side with Tuan Trent. So he has to follow, but he is having a great run through this corner. He can send it on the inside here, obviously. But you have to trust that Tuan Trent sees it coming. He actually misses the apex. That will give Lee Anderson a chance to get P2. If he tries to send it to the inside, that will be race for Tuan Trent. But he doesn't do that. He stays single foul. They will all go to the back straight in single foul position. Vodafone is a sweeping left-hander. Now, this is a long back straight that Johan just talked about. There's an opportunity, maybe not for Numb to get on Tran, but maybe for Anderson to make a move on Numb and get him in position when they get to the final corner. But nothing happens as they go down in the chicane. Which one Tran missing the corner a little bit there, and that will give him Numb the opportunity that he needs. Two corners to go. Tran has been amazing up front, trying to make his car as wide as a Julia Roberts smile out of corner number 12. One corner to go. He has full throttle. Here comes the finish line. Numb with a great run out of the final corner. Look at the toe that Anderson's going to get. They're coming. 
Antoine Tran is hustling. He's using his Flintstone feet, and he gets the win. Antoine Tran by nine one thousandths of a second. Wow, Nine what a race. Second, Anderson third. Podercheck is going to get fourth. Yeah, that will probably mean the Formula 2 title uh -oh. for him. Behind him, David Burns getting P5. Kick, kick had it off on the final corner. He was in that battle with Burns. That's going to cost him a handful of positions. Johan, you talked about David Burns getting the top five. He got there. It's a positive kind of commentator curse. P15 still battling, however, Neil uh, J. Armstrong fighting with Christopher Crook. Christopher Krug had a horrible pit stop uh, during the race. He has lost a lot of positions because he missed his pit stop, but he's trying to get into the top 15 with only two more corners to go. He has the speed compared to Neil Armstrong, but will he have enough speed out of the final corner as well to swing himself by? Neil Armstrong is defending. One more corner to go as the sun is back out and shining over the beaches of Sandford. Christopher Crook out of the final corner in the draft. Will he swing it to the inside? Is Neil holding position? And Christopher doesn't have the speed to stay in front. Neil comes home with P15. Christopher Crook P16. Great finish for Small Step ahead of Crook. Few other drivers. 22 cars still on the lead lap. The last one being Josh Brain as he works his way around the final two corners now. Great race in the season 19 finale here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We're going to take a short break. Don't go far. We'll run down the entire finishing order. Talk to our winner, I hope, Juan Tran. Congratulations for him. Errol Nunn, Lee Anderson, our podium finishers. Don't go far.
sanctioned by the Absolute Beginner League from Circa Zanvoort. Welcome back to GSRC's final round coverage of the Season 19 Formula Neagle Championship. It was a fun one. We can announce that Aeronum is indeed the Season 19 champion, but another champion beat him on the track, and that was Quan Tran. Did a great job of defense, weaving like a loom down the straight to keep the cars behind him. Quan picks up the win, bettering the Roland Estonian Aeronum. Lee Anderson, very impressive, picks up the final podium spot. We're going to talk about the F2 Championship in a minute. Bocek Podacek finishes fourth. David Burns has a great run from 25th to 5th. He did it just for fun. Christopher Garros is sixth. Now remember, Podacek and Garros were sitting four points apart in that F2 Championship. Nico Roman and Alex Poitia in the 7th and 8th spot. The Strudelmeister, Thomas Kick, who had an off in the final corner. Johan's going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, finishes ninth, And then Matt Tempest rounds out the top 10. Johan? Yeah, Luis Rodriguez Lujan comes home in P11. That's one driver that we haven't seen a lot about. He wins seven positions to finish just outside of the top 10. Vincent Bramey had a horrible first lap, but still brought it on P12. So good race from the Dutchman, recovering in the end. Edgar Sancinelli, unlucky P13, but a good race from Edgar, winning seven positions during it. Kevin Walls, same story as Vincent. Horrible first lap, just making up a lot of ground as the race went on. Neil J. Armstrong, great battle between him and Christopher Crook going to the line. They come home P15 and 16 respectively. Aaron La comes home P17, started there as well. Ryan J. Walker, another driver that we really didn't see today, but still on the lead lap, P18. In the last two drivers in the top 20, Super Peter Reed and Neil Bender. Rounded at your field, hidden blackjack, Neil Stevenson, Josh. Um, Brain in the double duck spot, Frederick Neptune, Troy Banks, Scott Angelo, Hendrik Kamara, and I don't think Dawson Brock took the grid. Before we go to interviews, uh, Johan, you did a little math. What do you, can you tell us about that F2 crown? It seems like Wojtek Potacek and Christopher Garros are exactly on the same amount of points. I'm still working out the calculation, so let's go back after a few interviews to see who actually got the title, but it seems extremely close between the two. We're trying to add up a fast laps. And of course, what's interesting is Thomas Kick had that off in the final corner, which might be make the difference between the who between photo check and girls who gets the championship. We'll find out in a minute. Let's go ahead, though. We have the opportunity to talk to uh, I guess we're talking to our champion, Arrow Num, the Roland Estonian. Arrow is soup here. Congratulations on another crown. Couldn't get this one. Did you know that you lost part of your nose on the end there? Yeah, there was a lot of contact, so I didn't know my nose was gone because I didn't see it. So, yeah, maybe that was the problem I couldn't pass there. Yeah, it was a little bit, uh, we we saw it come off. My goodness, Tran was, uh, <laughs> he was trying to make that car as wide as possible, wasn't he? Yeah, maybe it was just a little bit too much, but uh, yeah, the championship was uh, secured last round, so it was okay. Man, it was good to see you back here again. You got to race with an old foe there, Tuan Tran. I don't know how many corners you guys have raced together, but it's been a lot. Congratulations on second place. I'm going to put you under the gun here. I know you're busy. I know you do a lot of eye racing. Might we see you for the short little uh, five-race season coming up next time? Uh, most likely, uh, I, I will join again, so let's see. Good news. The fans love you. We'll see you. We'll put out the feelers, try to get uh, some of the other former champions in here to give you a run for your money. Congratulations on your seventh championship. Uh, thanks, guys. The Roland Estonian Aero Num. Johan, you want to talk to, to third degree? Yeah, third degree burns or third degree rocket burns or something because what a race, David. P25 to P5. Seems like you had a lot of fun out there. Yep, that's exactly what I was after, Johan. I, I basically was late getting in and I hadn't much practice and I thought, oh, I'm not sure I'm up for the stress of being at the front. And then I thought, I'll start at the back. <laughs> Well, it did work out, but I think it's interesting to hear you say that you were not looking for stress, but then those first couple of laps, it seemed like there were cars basically all over the track. Well, yeah, I was thrown back into the deep end because then I remembered, oh, crikey, Mickey, I'm at the back. Yeah, um, it was a bit interesting. And when I saw everyone spin at the end of lap one, I had a choice of hit a car or go to the grass. So I picked You finished in the end P5. Um, we obviously talked at the beginning of the broadcast about season 20. We're going to start very soon with the Tony Hayes Cup. Three weeks from now, the Formula Eagle. Are we going to see you there? 
Oh, abs- absolutely, mate. Yes, that, this, that's me back now. I've taken a break. Work was getting in the way, so I'm fully back. Very good. Good to see you around, David, and congratulations with P5. Thanks, guys. See you later. Was definitely good to have him back. Five former champions in this race today. That's that's pretty nice. Okay, we're going to talk to the man that I sat next to just two weeks ago as we broadcast the race, Ryan Walker. Ryan, started 24th, picked up a few spots. Were you able to keep the car clean? Uh, yeah, managed to uh, pick up a few spots uh, after having a couple of incidents in the early stages of the race, but uh, managed to come back and just about get close to the top 10 and Unfortunately, I had to be a car splash and dash uh, with a couple of laps to go. But overall, I enjoyed my debut in, in the ABL, and I will be back for more in the future for sure. Technical track here in, in the Netherlands. Uh, the draft played a big effect, but man, you had to be quick or you'd lose the draft through all the twisty sections. Yeah, absolutely. I, I heard a few guys mention on the, the ABL Discord that they were yeah, having trouble keeping up with people. And if you wanted to keep up with people, you had to stick in the draft. But uh, I never had that luxury. But again, I had fun. But it was, it's a technical track for sure. It's one of those tracks uh, you've got to be, you've got to be kind of, you've got to be got to be precise if you want to be quick here. Uh, and uh, as I seen today, there uh, with some of the guys up at the front, it seems to be that they can just they're just able to nail it every lap. We'll get you out of here on this one. What's your car of choice? I know that you, you like the Skippy, but I don't know if that's your favorite car. What what car do you like the you feel the most comfortable in on iRacing? Uh I've done well most most of the time you know, or at the moment I've been racing the spec race of Ford, so I'd say it's my favorite that was my favorite car, but uh next season I'm probably planning to race something else, maybe something like the T C R car or uh I'm not real sure, to be honest. I think the TCR will, I'll probably be doing, and anything else that uh, that I race in, it will just be just be when I feel like it, and just overall, just for fun. Yeah, I think that's where the GSRC fans know you the best from is racing that spec racer for. Congratulations, good to talk to you as an interview this time, and we'll see you down the road. All right, cheers, sir. Ryan Walker, always fun to talk to him. Okay, before we close up, I'm going to put the pressure on the man sitting to my right. He's he's got his shoes off. He's he's uh he's trying to figure out the math. You want to take a stab at it, Johan? Give us your best job. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think uh, I, I think I, I just don't dare. <laughs> I just don't dare. It's so tight. I, I had a, a conversation just now with the league organizers, and it seems like they are still doing calculations as well. So before we close out, I am not able to give you the standings, but it seems like Christopher Girls and Wojtek Potajek have equal on points. So they will have to see who has the best results to figure out who will win the Formula Two title. Um, um, luckily, however, the person that doesn't win the title doesn't have to wait long because, like we said, season 20 is around the corner next week with their test race. And three weeks from now, they will be back on GSRC with the first race of the Formula Eagle at Phillip Island. This is what you call a season ending cliffhanger. You want to know the answer? Check back in with us in three weeks when Johan just talked about it when we do come back. How about we thank everybody at the Absolute Beginner League for organizing Formula Eagle and contracting with GSRC to broadcast. Thanks to the company's equipment and software you see on the screen right now that we use on the broadcast. Stay with me. All of this is important. The original music that gives every GSRC broadcast that unique flavor and feel. That's thanks to Junior Lawn. See the screen for contact information. With this being the season 19 finale, the books are concluded here with GSRC's coverage of Formula Eagle. We've talked about it. We'll be back in a few weeks. We hope you join us. On screen now are some of the upcoming broadcasts. So check them out and mark them down on your calendar. If you want to know more about us, Okay, here you go. Here's your options. GlobalSimRacingChannel.com, of course. But we have social media deals, too. How about Twitter? GSR Channel. Facebook, Global Sim Racing Channel. And Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Hey, while you're here, if you haven't done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber by hitting that big red button so you don't miss a thing on GSRC. Hey, and if you're looking for the gift for the person who has everything, go check out the merchandise store at gsrc.storenv.com. That's one E. Sadly, with Easter on the horizon, the GSRC chocolate microphone is sold out, but there are lots of other great gift ideas. The link is in the description below. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, that'd be Johan, Sean, and Dougie. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. As we saw, former champion Juan Tran pick up the win here at the Dunes at Zandvoort. 
With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, good health, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track. <laughs>